Hi there, I hope you're doing well. My name is Chantal, welcome or welcome back to my channel. I have one spread left in my Hoo Hoo sketchbook, so today I thought we could get out the jelly gouache and finish the final spread. Good afternoon, I hope you're doing well and I hope you have a drink next to you. There's something that we need to talk about. It's a problem I didn't think I had. It's imposter syndrome. It's something that I'm fighting and I've implemented three tips that have been a huge help to me. So today I'm going to tell you what I've been doing to help combat imposter syndrome and I hope that these tips might help you too. But first, what is imposter syndrome? Well, it's a form of self-doubt when you don't feel good enough, you don't feel like your skills match up to other people's, and you can't help but always compare yourself to other artists. It's a spectrum and yours may or may not be as detrimental. Before, I didn't quite understand it. I was able to form a distinction between the art that I create and the art that other people create. Everyone is different, and I could see the positives in our differences. I mean, the world would be very boring if everyone was the same, and the same goes for art. Increasingly over the last year, I have felt feelings prop up relating to my self-worth. And it can be difficult to try and convince yourself otherwise, because as a self-taught artist, what do you have to convince yourself? In my head, it's like, I think I can draw and I think I can paint, but when it comes down to it, I'm often disappointed. And that leads me to doubt if I actually can and if I actually can do it well, because I don't have anything to say that I can. I don't have art related qualifications. I don't have evidence of my skills. And I think that's a common problem for self-taught artists. All I have are the pieces that I've created that some people have said that they've liked, but they might have just said that to be kind. And I think that's where imposter syndrome stems from as a self-taught artist. When you feel those feelings, what is it that you can say to counteract and convince yourself otherwise? There is a lot less. There's a lot less than someone that has studied art and has a degree. Another factor I had is that I'm still in the early steps of my career. I haven't gone viral, I haven't had any posts on any of my socials do exceptionally well, and I don't have a physical shop where I am personally packaging and sending orders out. I don't have that connection to people that actually like my art. So what do you do? How do you fight it? One thing that I've been doing for a long time is I have kind of set rules when it comes to creating. When I'm working in my sketchbook, I can go for it. I could do anything. Nothing too big or elaborate, but I just have fun. I always make sure I have enough time. That's the key point here. I reach for my sketchbook when I have at least half an hour. If it's late at night, I will only reach for my messy sketchbook because realistically, that's probably all I have time for. If you don't know, my messy sketchbook is a place for well, mess. I literally write the words messy sketchbook on the front of the sketchbook and that reminds me that it doesn't matter what I make, it's a place for messes, it's not a place for really pretty pieces. And I think that gives a lot of freedom, it's something I would like to talk about in future because I think it's a really important thing that all artists should have. But when it comes to painting an original piece, I like to wake up early in the day and start painting really nice and early. Personally, I like to finish a painting in one day, if I can, or at least the majority of it. And that's where watercolour is a really good medium, because you really can. It's not like oils that need time and you need to wait between layers. It's a really freeing medium that you can work fast with. And I like to get as much done on the first day as I possibly can. If it comes to the second day, I find it immediately a million times harder to get started, to get in the flow, to make progress. I'm slower and less successful. It just doesn't go very well. And then if it comes to the third day, there is no chance I'm getting good work done. And that's when I doubt myself and my abilities. I start questioning, why can't I do this? Why can't I complete just one painting? Why do I not like it? I can't see how to make it good. 
where it's a lot easier on the first day. I try and avoid being in that position because it's not fun and creating should be fun. And also those feelings of self-doubt, they are not fun either. This method also works to avoid having unfinished pieces or abandoned pieces. I feel like by doing this, you're giving yourself the best chance of completing the project. If you get a sudden urge to create and it's later on in the day, why not reach for a sketchbook and jot down a quick sketch or a thumbnail with some ideas around it? Any thoughts you have about the composition, the color palette, anything related to that idea, that concept. Having those ideas jotted down makes you better equipped when it comes to creating the final piece. And you know, the reality is you wouldn't have been able to finish that piece that evening anyway. So sometimes it's better to be realistic and create with the time frame you have. If you're reaching, you're probably not gonna be happy with what you create. And if you've only got a couple of hours to work with, you can't expect yourself to create a mind-blowing piece and compare yourself to other artists that have spent 40 hours creating a similar piece. It's just not gonna work. Being realistic really is the key here. Work with the time that you've got. The second tip I'd like to talk to you about is absolutely not necessary, but it can help you and your self-worth. It can help you have more belief in yourself, your skills, your abilities, and that is to learn. As a self-taught artist, you may feel like you're not good enough because you haven't had a formal education, but you don't need to get a degree to do this. There are lots of different ways that you can learn as an artist. And often, what people learn for a degree isn't even relevant to what they're after. Their specific medium or style might be completely unrelated to what they're learning. You have YouTube, you have short form courses. There's so much information out there that you can take in and it's all so different. But some stuff is also so specific. You can research and learn about these very specific topics that might not have even been covered at university. YouTube is an amazing resource and you might as well make the most of it. There is so much out there and a lot of it is free, so make sure you are using it. As a self-taught artist, you should still teach yourself the basics. You can draw a thousand heads expecting to get better and figure it out, and you will, but in order to get the portraits proportionally correct, you're much better off researching the sizing methods to begin with, so all of your heads will at least look pretty anatomically correct. The rest can come later, stylizing, adapting, that can all come later. But you should still be starting with the basics and be prepared to learn and teach yourself the fundamentals. The third most important step comes down to how you see your art. You've created art, but you don't like it. Is there an actual reason? Is it as simple as there's an area you're not happy with and if you do this one thing instead, that would make the piece better? Or do you just hate everything about it? If it's closer to the first, work with that. You might have seen in an art vlog, and if you haven't, then I will leave it down below. I painted the star sign Aries as a character, and I felt like something was off, but I couldn't quite put my finger on it. I mean, at first, I forgot to add the final highlights with a gel pen, so I fixed that, and I thought that it might have just been that. But then when I was looking at it further, I realized it's because I overblended. There were no lines in the painting whatsoever, it was just completely smooth, I blended everything out. And whilst that isn't something that can be fixed for that particular painting, it's a technique that I can work on and I can take forward to my future paintings. If you can pinpoint exactly what it is that you don't like, that's really good. That's something you can work on, you can work with that. However, if you hate everything about what you've created, that one hits a little deeper. That's linked to your self-worth and how you see your skills. It's a little bit harder to manage. The best way to fix this is to create art that you like. What I would do is completely switch things up. Experiment in everything. Try a new medium, a new style, a new technique, a new subject. Absolutely switch things up to the point where you create something so unexpected 
It's shocking that it's you that's actually created it. You might discover something. You might love this brand new thing that you've just made. And you might really surprise yourself. Self-doubt is something that needs to be worked on and it comes from inside. You have the skills. You can create good art. You just don't have enough belief in yourself to be able to see that. If you can relate to any of these feelings, just know that you're not alone. It's very common in creatives and we will get through it. These are the tips that have helped me, so if they can help you just a tiny bit, then that would be amazing. And we also painted some fruit. I'm not sure why. Fruit are just kind of colourful and round, so they're fun to paint. There's a lot of texture. I wanted to try using gouache again and I think they turned out pretty cute. Let's do this. Let's get through this together. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Don't be too hard on yourself. Take time to relax and I'll see you again on Thursday. Bye bye.